ان الحمد لله الذي نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله ارسله الله تعالى بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا فصلى الله عليه وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وان شر الامور محدثاتها وان كل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد ان اقول اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم كذلك نقص عليك من انباء ما قد سبق وقد اتيناك من لدنا ذكرا من اعرض عنه فانه يحمل يوم القيامه وزرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا اله الا الله اللهم اجعلنا من الذين امنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر امين يا رب العالمين In today's khutbah, I'll speak to you about a couple of places that are close together in the Qur'an. These are towards the end of Surah Taha, that's the 20th Surah of the Qur'an. And the first place I'm going to start with is the 99th and 100th ayah. Uh, before I go into these ayat, I just want to tell you what the, the, the essential subject matter is. A lot of times you run into somebody who says, please don't tell me. If you tell me something that's, let's just say you're talking about something is halal or haram. You're learning about something being halal or haram. And in the conversation, you meet somebody who says, listen, I don't want to have this conversation. Please don't tell me. Because if I know, then I will be responsible. So it's better I don't know. That way, I'm not going to get in trouble. Because if I find out, then Allah will ask me about it. I'll, I'll feel guilty about it later. It's going to be a burden on my head. I would rather not feel that burden and not even have that conversation. In fact, you'll meet people that will say, listen, I try to stay away from any conversations, learning about Islam or learning about the Quran or learning about what the Prophet said or what is right and what is wrong because I don't want to be in trouble. And I notice that you're starting to learn some things. Save yourself. Because the more you learn, the more burden you're going to feel. Because you're going to learn some things that you shouldn't be doing. You're going to learn about some changes you're supposed to make. And when you learn about those changes, it's going to put too much pressure on you and you'll just be in trouble for no reason. If you want a stress-free free life, it's better you kind of stop from learning so much because it's just going to make your life difficult, right? And why put yourself into that trouble? See, if I don't know, then I can't get in trouble for it. Now, before we go into the Quran, let's just take some examples in life. See if that works in life. A doctor tells a patient, listen, you have a very serious... The patient says, no, 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 don't finish that sentence. Don't tell me. If you don't tell me, I'll be fine. Because if you tell me, then I don't know, maybe I'll need surgery. Maybe I'm going to have to get heavy medication. So if you just please don't tell me at all, my life was just fine until you told me. So let's just, I'm, I'm leaving this office. I don't want to finish the rest of the sentence. In another situation, somebody's sitting at home and they're changing TV channels or they're watching their weather app and it says severe warning. Evacuate the city because in the next five hours and you turn off the app, you turn, no, no, I, I don't want to hear this. So long as I look outside, the weather is fine right now. I don't want this guy to give me bad news. I hate the weather, man. He just keeps giving me bad news. And I don't want to deal with it. If I didn't change this channel, my life was... If I, if I didn't watch this channel before, my life would have been good. Thank God I turned it off in time. Does that sound like an insane person to you? Or no? <laughs> A friend of yours in school says, Hey, did you forget the exam is, in, exam is next? You say, No, no, don't finish that sentence. I don't want to know if it's next Friday. Or next two days from now, or next one. Don't tell me, because if you tell me, then I have to study. Don't tell me. Just, I don't want to deal with it. My life was fine. Why did you even bring this up? Save yourself. Why are you even looking at the calendar yourself? <laughs> this is safer for you. This mentality doesn't work anywhere in life. Why? Because in life, we are dealing with reality. And then you say, well, no, Allah is different because Allah is an authority. And so, if I didn't know the rules... I can tell Allah on Judgment Day, Ya Allah, I didn't know the rules. That's why I didn't follow it. Right? Well, that's that, that way I'll, I'll get away with it. Because ignorance can be, you can plead ignorance. Actually, in, court, in the court of law, 
you can actually go to the judge and, and it's, it's something called a defense for someone who claims to be innocent. They can say, I plead ignorance. Right. So somebody was, you know, they entered a, 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 a do not enter, you know, no trespassing. It says private property or something else. Right. And they didn't see the sign or the sign was covered by a tree or something or they were in a hurry and they didn't read the sign and they entered. And now there's a case against them and they come in front of the judge and they say, I didn't know. I didn't see the sign. And they could actually plead innocent. They, they could get away with that. But let me give you a different example. You're driving a car and you never wanted to learn traffic laws. You didn't want to learn about stopping at a red light. You didn't want to learn about stopping at a stop sign, speed limits. You didn't want to learn any of those things. So you're going through a few red lights, several car accidents has happened. Finally, the judge, the police catches you. You're standing in front of the judge before they throw you in jail for all kinds of chaos you created. And you say, I never learned these rules. But this is different because if you never learned these rules, why did you get inside a car? Why did you get inside the car? If you, if you think that you are capable of getting in the car, then that getting in the car comes with responsibilities. So actually, my life and yours is similar to the driver. The moment Allah put us on this earth, He put responsibility on us. The moment we became the age of adulthood, when we reached what the Quran calls Balagha Ashuddahu, when you reach that age, you and I become what's called Mas'ul, responsible, worthy of being asked. Human beings will be asked on Judgment Day. Given khutbah about that before. A human being will be informed in great deal about the priorities they made and the things they put off till later. We are not simply roaming for free and we have no responsibilities. Did the human being think that he's just been left around without purpose? But you, when a human being thinks that they are roaming free and until if they find out that they're responsible, then the responsibility begins. Right? That's actually not the case. You're already in the car, you're already on the road, and if you, do, if you say, I didn't know, if you say, I didn't know, that can only work. That excuse can only work if you looked everywhere for the rules, and you couldn't find anybody. And then you drove whatever way you could. And then you say, well, I tried my best to learn, but I couldn't find any resources, and that's why I messed up. Now you have a defense. There were people who lived at a time when there were no prophets. Before Rasulullah wasallam, there are people who were alive and they didn't have Muhammad Rasulullah wasallam. They didn't have the Quran. Maybe they lived in a village where they never heard about Isa wasallam. They never heard about Musa wasallam. They never heard about Shu'aib or Salih or any of the prophets. They don't know, they don't know anything about any prophet. Nothing. So they don't know how to pray. And they, they're looking and looking for an answer. And imagine for a moment that a person like that is looking for an answer and they die looking for an answer. They never found the answer. And Allah, Allah may question this person even though that's not how the questioning will be. Why didn't you pray five times a day? Why didn't you do Hajj? Why? Well, it wasn't even revealed yet. Or I didn't know. I had no idea. That kind of a person might even have a defense because they had no resources. They had no access to that. The way Allah will judge them, Allah knows. But for sure, Allah does not hold someone accountable when he didn't provide them with guidance, right? He, whatever guidance Allah provided that person, whatever opportunities Allah provided that person, Allah will judge based on that. So now come to you and me. You're talking to somebody about what Allah says, or they're talking to you about what Allah says, and you say, don't tell me what Allah says. No, no, no please, please stop. If you tell me, it's going gonna, it's gonna to weigh heavy on me. Now this thing, this attitude, first of all, the first part of this khutbah, I wanted to highlight how illogical that is. How does it make any sense? and how you're assuming that you're not already responsible when you think like that. So this thinking is wrong. I am already responsible whether I learned or not. The fact that I delayed my learning makes me more liable. It doesn't free me, it actually puts me in more trouble. And believe me, people have lived a life where they didn't want to learn, they didn't care. And later on in their life, something Allah put in their heart, they decided to start learning. And when they decided to start learning, instead of feeling more burdened, the truth of it is, you can ask millions of people that have gone through this experience. When they first started learning about their religion properly, you know what happened? First time, they actually truly felt free. They didn't feel enslaved or burdened. They actually felt freed. 
They felt freed from the, ch the, 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 the chains of culture. They fr felt freed from the expectations of people. They realized they've been trying to make people happy when they should have only been concerned with making Allah happy. And making Allah happy is very easy. And making people happy is very difficult. They've been putting themselves in difficulty all this time. Then they realize that they've wasted so much of their life. They, they, they look back and say, I, I, I should have been learning this 10 years ago. I wasted so much of my time. Instead of saying, man, I wish I delayed another 10 years. I could have had another 10 years of freedom. When someone actually does start learning, instead of regretting it, they regret the time where they were in ignorance. That's what they regret. That's what a person actually regrets. That's the reality of it. But today, what I really want to dedicate this khutbah to is when you and I decide that we want to ignore something on purpose. We don't want to know because we're going to become responsible. You know, in, in, in physics, we talk about how in, in Newton's laws of physics, to every action, there's an equal but opposite reaction, right? And that's in physics, right? There's action and reaction. reaction. Well, sometimes we take an action and there's a spiritual reaction. So we take an action in this life, in this world, but the reaction is in the unseen. The reaction is in the world that we cannot see. The reaction is in ways we cannot gauge by physics or chemistry or biology. And those reactions, Allah teaches us about some of them in the Quran. And this action, someone who wants to ignore on purpose, there are a couple of reactions. And there are actually three reactions, not one. There are three reactions to this one action, which means this is a pretty serious action. <laughs> It gets three reactions. Now let me tell you, how do you remember these three? One of those reactions is in this life. One of those reactions is on Judgment Day. And another reaction is after Judgment Day in the Akhirah. After that. So there's three reactions Allah talks about in Surah Taha. This life, there's a reaction. Qiyamah, there's a reaction. Resurrection Day, there's a reaction. And then in the afterlife, after that, there's also a reaction. So it's pretty serious stuff. Now, the, the, he, in, in, not in that order, he mentions the first reaction he mentions is Yom al Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. Why? Because the day of resurrection is a day when we are held responsible for everything we did. And mentioning that is absolutely essential in the 99th and 100th ayah. Allah says, وَقَدْ آتَيْنَاكَ مِنْ لَدُنَّا ذِكْرَىٰ We have given you from ourselves, especially from our treasures, we have granted you a way to remember. Dhikra. Now the, this dhikr is the Qur'an, and then Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْهُ And whoever ignores it on purpose, whoever deliberately, intentionally ignores it. What does he say about them? فَإِنَّهُ يَحْمِلُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وِزْرًا Then this person is going to be the one that will be carrying a huge burden on the day of resurrection. They will have a burden on them on resurrection day. Look at the power of this speech. This is a person that said, I don't want the burden now. That's what they said. And Allah says, this person did not want to carry this burden now, so I will make them carry a huge burden on the day of resurrection. Now you decide, would you rather carry a burden now, or would you rather carry a burden in the next life? That's the decision you have to make. And what's incredible is in, when Allah talks about the carrying of, of, of wahi, when we carry the, response, the burden of obeying Allah, learning Allah's word, learning about the Prophet ﷺ, when we carry that, it doesn't actually become a burden on us. He says, "You read Allahu liyu khafifa ankum." By by putting that burden on you, Allah actually makes your life easier. He puts the he reduces the load from you. It's the opposite effect. It doesn't work like this world. It's the opposite effect. The more we carry Allah's word, the lighter light becomes. Life becomes. Life becomes not heavier but lighter. It's the opposite effect. So now let me take you another place. This is actually where things, Allah explains this further in the same surah, that was the 99th and 100th ayah, then he goes on in the 125th ayah. This is where we're going to learn about this life. I said there are three reactions. The reaction on judgment day, we're going to have to carry a burden. Whatever we didn't carry is going to get much bigger and we have to carry it then. But what happens in this life? He says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ And whoever purposely ignores remembering me and remembering Allah is what? remembering the word of Allah remembering the guidance of Allah whoever purposely ignores remembering me mentioning me 
Someone wants to walk away from that. Then Allah says, for this person, there is no doubt about it. This person has a life, a ma'ish. Ma'ish in Arabic is used for a life. That is dhank. That's a strange word in the Quran. Pretty much never else has it been used. It's been, this is ma'isha, ma'isha and dhanka is actually a mausuf and sifa. It's an adjective. Now what does this word dhank mean? Let me just explain this word to you. You, you might find a translation that says a depressed life. Or a, a tight, a difficult life. But I don't want to use the word depressed because some of you are in the counseling profession or psychology profession. Depression can be a, a, a term, a clinical term. And the Quran is definitely not using clinical terms, right? So I don't want to use those words. So let's explore this word a little bit. Then understand, a person who ignores Allah's words or Allah on purpose, they get something happening in their life. Every part of their life. Their family life, their career life, their alone life, their sleeping life, their waking up life, their their physical life, everything is described with this one adjective. It's not like one part of their life is affected. Their entire life is affected. Their day is affected, their night is affected, their relationships are affected, their thoughts are affected. Affected with what? This word dunka comes from dunkatun, which is actually used in Arabic for zukam. Meaning, when you have a stuffed nose and you have a cold, and you have a lot of mucus built up and you can feel, feel your face swell up like a like you know sinus pressure right and you can't breathe from your nostrils your nose is completely blocked and you're feeling like your eyes are swelling up and you feel like there's somebody just pumped something inside your face and you're feeling stuffed right that's actually called zukam that's called bunka and something that has been if you took a pillow and you put things in it and more things in it and more things in it and you keep stuffing it in, tightening it in, that's actually also a kind of, uh, it's called dinak. المكتنز, they talk about a person who's getting really, really fat, like the meat is stuffed inside this person, they're actually called, <laughs> they're called dinak also, or dunak, actually in Arabic. Um, so this word is then also used, dunuk ar-rajul, a person who's so pressured in their life because you know the more you fill things in like if you put air too much air in a balloon the pressure increases right you put too much air in the tide the pressure increases when you put when there's too much mucus inside the pressure increases the headache increases right so this pressure internal pressure is actually what bank refers to and the Arabs used it before Islam to talk about a person who's experiencing bank. What would they say about this person? This person has become weak physically. Da'ufa fi jismihi. Wa nafsihi. He's become weak emotionally. They become stressed too easily. They become anxious too easily. They become angry too easily. They start crying too easily. They become, they lose their, their, their thoughts too easily. They can't concentrate. They, psychologically, they've become weak. They say, وَرَأِيهِ And in their opinion, meaning they're not able to analyze things properly, they're not able to think straight. Because you know, when you're under a lot of pressure, you can't think straight. When you're really late for work, where are the keys? Where are the keys? The keys are in your face. They're right there. But you can't see them because you're under pressure right now. Even things that you can do normally, you stop, you, you can't have the ability to do them because you're under pressure. And then, وَعَقْلِهِ And even their ability to think there's so much pressure, they can't think straight. Just like when you and I are stressed out, we can't think straight. When you and I are really under a lot of pressure, we can't think clearly. It's very difficult to be under pressure and be able to have presence of mind. What is Allah saying, describing a person who ignores what Allah says? He says their entire life gets filled, gets described as dhanka. And it's interesting also that dhanka is a masla. It's an adjective. It's actually an infinitive. What that means is, they're not. I. I. It's, it wouldn't be an, enough of a translation to say they have a life filled with pressure. No, their life itself becomes pressure. That's the power of these words. The light. Their life itself becomes pressure. They're always stressed and anxious. They might even have physical ailments. They might not able be able to make correct decisions in their life. They're getting trouble from all sides in their life, constantly under pressure, constantly under stress. And then, why did this happen? Because the one place that could have removed all of the stress from their life was the word of Allah, was the dhikr of Allah. And they said, no, 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 I don't want the dhikr of Allah. That's too much stress. That's too much pressure. 
I don't want the... You see how uh, uh, ironic that is? You see how funny that is? They did that. The person ignored the word of Allah because they wanted to avoid pressure, avoid stress. They thought it would make life tight. It would be too strict. And what does Allah say about His, his, his uh, guidance? مَنْ يُرِدِ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَهْدِيَهُ يَشْرَحْ صَدْرَهُ لِلْإِسْلَامِ Whoever Allah wants to guide, Allah oh, expands their chest for surrender. Allah describes coming to His word, surrendering before Him, He describes it as your chest expanding, loosening. He tells the Prophet ﷺ when revelation came, and revelation was very heavy. We're giving you a heavy word. And that revelation when it came to the Prophet ﷺ, Allah reminded him of his favor on him and he said, Alam nashrah laka sadrak? Didn't we expand your chest for you? Didn't we broaden it? Meaning we gave you relief? So the irony and the ignorance of this person, the tragedy of this person is, they think they are giving themselves relief by not learning, by not coming to the dhikr of Allah. And the crazy thing is the only reason they've got pressure in every part of their life is because they're, they're not releasing that pressure by coming to the dhikr of Allah. They're hurting themselves. This is the second and heavy consequence in this life. This consequence, yeah, Allah already told us, the person who ignored Allah's responsibility will carry a burden on Judgment Day. Now look at the tragedy of this, this person. Khasira dunya wal akhira. This life was filled with pressure, with bunk on every turn. Dunk with the children, dunk with the spouse, pressure with children, stress with children, anxiety with children, anxiety with spouse, anxiety with parents, anxiety at work, anxiety in finances, anxiety in health. Everywhere they turn, there's problem, 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 pressure, pressure, pressure. And then they come on judgment day, oh, finally, this dunya is over. Might as well get some pressure. No, now the akhirah version of the wizard. Now the burden. And then so Allah describes this person in these ayat and He says, not only are they living this pressured life here, now he adds another problem on Judgment Day. وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى We will raise him and herd him on Judgment Day in a state that that person is blind. We already learned that they're carrying a burden. Now they're blind on top of that. They're blind on top of that. And when a person is raised on Judgment Day blind, they're in shock because they weren't blind when they were in this life. And this person is raised blind now. So he says, قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَا حَشَرْتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا My Rabb, why did you raise me blind? I used to be someone who saw. I used to have vision. Why am I being blind now on Judgment Day? And Allah says to him, قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا That's how our revelations, our ayat came to you. You remember how our ayat came to you? فَنَسِيتَهَا Then you forgot all about them. Forgetting means forgetting. Forgetting also means dismissing. You know how you say to somebody, man, forget you. Ah, forget that guy. Forget that guy means what? Ignore it. A friend comes to you and says, forget about this Quran stuff. Live your life. Nasitaha. Hum yanhawna anhu wa yanawna anhu. They stop others from doing it and stop themselves from doing it. From, from coming to it. So the, here he says, Allah is telling this person on Judgment Day, my ayat came to you, you forgot them. You ignored them. You were blind to them. You wanted to see reality with your eyes. You didn't want to see the vision that Allah was giving you with His nur. Well, you didn't want nur. If you don't want nur, then you don't get nur on Judgment Day. You have no light in your eyes. Just like that, today you're being ignored. You're being forgotten. Being forgotten means you don't think about somebody, you don't care about somebody, you don't hear about their cries. Allah is basically describing this person as becoming irrelevant on Judgment Day. Because they considered Allah's ayat irrelevant in this life. This is the conclusion of the khutbah today. Um, I just wanted to complete this, this small passage. It ends at 128, 127. This, in this ayah, Allah has given us a secret. This is the last secret of these ayat that I'll share with you. And that is how we will give reward to, or we will pay back those who went too far. Asrafa, those who went too far. The ones who go in excess. If you had an argument with somebody, they said something harsh to you, you responded with something harsh, okay, they scored one, you scored one. They said something mean to you, 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 you came back with a hundred, diff hundred times insults, that's asrafa. That's asrafta. You went too far. You exceeded. 
Quran talks about la tusrif fil qatl. When 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 tribes used to go into into fights with each other, one villager killed another villager from a different tribe. Now this village comes and kills the entire village. There's israf fil qatl. I'm going to kill you, your cousin, your chicken, your burn your house down. I'm going to take you all out. Anybody that ever carried your name, I will end your lineage, right? Because you know you you slap my goat or something. That was israf fil qatl. Israf is what someone who goes too far. Too far. Islaf can be in spending. Allah talks about that in the Quran, right? So, you know, Islaf is, for example, you need certain things, but you want to go far beyond that and keep getting more and more. Like, for example, if you got invited to a wedding, a walima, or, you know, aqiqa, some celebration, right? And you're not that hungry. But you see the guy in front of you took five pieces of chicken and eight kebabs and a mountain of rice and you're like he built the mountain of Uhud I need to at least have you know a lot of or at least something I should I should compete so you and you're not even that hungry but you're like there's three more people behind me they might get the next drumstick so I'll take 12 drumsticks and I'll take the entire salad and you know and you're just building this like monumental architectural work on your plate that you can't even carry at this point and you take it and you ate two bites of it and you're like well, I'm done that's Israf. You didn't need all that. You wasted all that's Israf, right? Now why did why did we, the subject today wasn't Israf? The subject today was a person who ignores the reminder. A person who says, I don't want to know. Allah is telling us now the secret that he knew all along about a person like that. That person knew all along that they're doing something in excess. They're talking about other people in excess. They're earn, they're 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 backbiting in excess. They're spending in excess. They're doing some kind of, or they're being vengeful, they're taking revenge with others in excess. They're developing hatred in excess. There's some excessiveness in them. And they know that if they get a reminder from the word of Allah, the word of Allah will call them out on their excess. And they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Because that will put them in check. That will make them stop doing. They know it's wrong. Somewhere inside them, they know it's wrong. And they actually want to ignore what Allah is saying, not because they don't know, but part of them already knows, I have a pretty good guess Allah is not okay with what I'm doing. I'd rather not hear it directly. It's, they're not that innocent. So since I didn't know, that's why I'm not responsible. Oh, you knew something. In some, your, some part of your conscience was poking you. And so what does Allah say? كَذَلِكَ وَكَذَلِكَ نَجْزِي مَنْ أَسْرَفَ وَلَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ That's how we compensate the one who went overboard, the one who was excessive, and did not believe in the ayat of his Rabb. وَلَا عَذَابُ الْآخِرَةِ أَشَدُّ وَابْقَى And the punishment of the Akhirah, remember the third reaction, is even worse and is even longer lasting. So judgment day was already scary enough. This life was already scary enough. I don't want to live a life of pressure and misery. I want to feel relaxed in my life. When you guys have pressure from the exam, when you have pressure from finishing a work project, when you have pressure from a huge family obligation, pressure, pressure, you know, when the pressure is done, when the event is done, when the exam is done, what do you do? Oh, I can breathe. There's a release. This person does not get a release in this life. They get out of one trouble, they end up in another trouble. Another trouble, another bunk, another bunk, another bunk. It's in every part of their life. And then the burden on judgment day. And then Allah says, this is nothing compared to what's coming in the last life because what they're getting in the next, the final life, in addition to being blind and being scolded by Allah, what's coming in the final life is far worse and far longer lasting than any of this. Allah protect you and me from it. So this, this state, this figure of speech that we use in English, they say ignorance is bliss. Uh, be careful with that statement <laughs> it's a very ignorant statement and there's no bliss in it there's absolutely no bliss in it and I, I, pr I, I pray Allah protects our loved ones from falling into this trap and I pray Allah protects you and me from falling into this trap and if we have become someone who's been ignoring the word of Allah in any part of our life then we will then we, maybe we might realize that the, the difficulty that has come, the bunk that has appeared in our life in different places may have been because we ignored Allah's word. And when we remember Allah's word and live by it again, maybe Allah will bring, you know, unlock the, the doors of His blessings and release and mercy and that pressure that we've been feeling will go away. So I pray Allah removes that pressure from all of your lives and gives all of you relief. 
and myself. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ani wa iyaakum bil ayati wa al-dhikri al-Hakim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قال الله عز وجل في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أقول أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد عباد الله رحمكم الله اتقوا الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقم الصلاة إن الصلاة كانت على المؤمنين كتابا مقوطا